Welcome to Watercolor Wednesday, Church of the Palms, and this is Kathy Futrell. Welcome. Today we're going to be doing watercolor with uh, the beach as the subject matter. So I'll show you a few examples and we'll get started. All right, so here are some examples of what you can go by. Uh, there are several different scenes. This particular one has, uh, matter of fact, that is the one I used that inspired this painting. And here, what I did is um, I, sh I sort of looked at the same horizon that I see in this photograph, and I made up my own clouds. I gave it the beach. I plopped in these this uh, greenery here, and I left out the buildings. However, in the second little version that I made of the beach scene, see this little house right here? So I liked the shape of that and that orange against that blue sky and I exaggerated the beach and the sky so it wasn't a real small um, thin strip. Here are Here is one that would be quite simple to do however in looking at this photograph I would tend to want to shift the sea oats off to one side and then use the other like three different clumps um, against the water. I can demonstrate that. This has a little, um, well, I think it probably is similar to the steps that you see in this example. So doing a little miniature sketching of that. Also, I think when we see the ocean, we're often wanting to put little sailboats in, and that can be done uh, by going around the subject matter a little bit. So by, you know, I haven't given this a whole lot of thought as to which one I'm going to do today. And to be honest, for the sake of time, usually I encourage everybody to go as large as you can. But for the demo, I think I'm gonna keep it rather small. And that way, let's see, how am I going to do? Maybe I will do something different than the two I have already done that, um, ah, that's perfect. We can just put it right there. So I, I always sort of think about where is the water, okay? And where's the sky? And this should be a pretty straight line. And sometimes you might want to use a straight edge to make that straight line, which this is not cheating. This is, this is just being practical, okay? Um, if I had a ruler, I'd just use a ruler. So uh, in looking at the sea oats in the sky, there's not much to draw really, uh, but I did say that I would change the clumps of the grass. Oh, there's one other time that we uh, did do watercolor of the beach. I don't know if some of you remember doing that, but we did sunsets and that was a very simple one where we added a lot of color to the sky. And that's a wet and wet in which you would start by using something like this big sky flow brush. You just wet the whole thing and you put in the color, always starting with your lightest color first and building to the dark. Now, we're not gonna do the sunset. We're gonna do a sky, a blue sky with clouds. And again, we want to look at the sea oats. You know, um, the shoreline is kind of important between what's, what's sand and what's sea oats and because these sea oats are kind of turning this way i think i'm going to let my clumps uh, also do the same thing but as they move away from this first little hill side they get smaller and smaller and i don't want them to all be you know twin triplets here i want them to have some variation and they all kind of run together whether or not i do the pier maybe i could do something architectural um, with something in the distance kind of peeking through uh, a little architecture. Oh, and something else that makes a beach scene uh, kind of fun uh, is also a few umbrellas. So uh, maybe it's, it's an opportunity for you to be creative. And I'll just have this showing through the sea oats and my umbrella is going to be rather light. So any of the sea oats I do on top of that can be dark. And because I don't really want to draw the people sitting in the chairs, I'm just gonna ex sort of give an impression of a couple of chairs and a shadow. So the other thing, <laughs> since I've got all the subject over here, I might as well put a few sailboats in here. I will take some masking tape and a pair of scissors. I might as well just show you how to do that. So if, if, you, were, if you were really worried about getting Ah, good. 
Okay, so sometimes I'll just take a piece of masking tape. Now you can also do this with um, a masking fluid, okay? Or you can do it with, well, masking fluid is what I had in mind. But I often will do a cell. Um, this is going to be a little too big. Let's see here. All right, so I'm going to put in one of the cells. This is a little big. I made a, I'm just going to leave that. No, I'm not. I don't like that. Let me just do another little side of the cell. And this is sticking to my scissors. But this will work. I'm going to lay that next to it. I may have overlapped the two so that there's not that space in between. It just completes a wholesale, but I will wholesale. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, that What I'll do is when I'm done with this, I will put the line back in. I'm going to paint around that one so you can just see the difference. But doing, doing the scissors with a little bit of tape is uh, a quick little trick. Now, because I'm going to wet that entire sky, uh, I could use this Sky Flow brush just to show you how it works. It's wonderful because um, we're doing a wet and wet sky. We're going to do a wash, and I went around that cell since I didn't have it uh, masked off. Um, I get the sky pretty wet. Now, we do end up with corners, but by the time we put it in a mat, it's, that disappears. And because everything on top, the sea ups are going to be darker, I don't worry about that. So I could have put the water on with my smaller flat, but obviously it was quicker to use that big brush. Now on my palette, I'm mixing some cerulean blue and I'm going to do some of my cobalt. Oh, and let's put some, let's, let's put some ultramarine in here. Let's just pull a lot of different blues together. Looks, there hardly looks any difference. This is a Prussian blue, and you will see a difference in the Prussian blue. And let's take a little bit of purple. Uh, this is called um, uh, amethyst. Okay, so, so what I wanted to do when I start doing the sky is that I want to start very dark at the top. So a little purple and a little blue, and I want to create some clouds. And I like moving the uh, color of the sky. I like to bring uh, the clouds uh, large at the top and they get smaller as they come down. So if you've ever gone outside and observed the horizon, always the clouds are big at the top and they tend to have a little shadow on the bottom side. So sometimes just move, wiggling um, a little darker on the bottom here and then they just, as they move way, way, way off in the distance, they get uh, very tiny. Now remember, against this sail, I have to make that, ooh, I like um, the fact that I'm getting that straight. Wow, that, that sometimes doesn't happen. Okay, and then I could just paint right over that. Well, you see, on something as small as that, you could probably, and as little and not as detailed, you could probably have painted around that. Now, I don't like the fact that it looks like the same color everywhere. So, I'm going to put a little more dark in. And uh, this is a, a beautiful, uh, cloudy sky. And put a little more blue in. And matter of fact, you have to get in and out of a sky pretty darn quickly. So, I'd say that... Uh, I'm trying to overwork it right now, so I have to stop. Um, now, the water is going to be more of a turquoise, but at this point, I cannot put the water in. So I'm going to work on the sand a little bit and do some details here and here. And the reason for that is if I put the water in right now, it would bloom right into it. So here, you can see that um, a lot of the subject is working with the sand. Now, I'm going to put a little grayness and I'll show you oh, that's nice that you got that bigger uh, so for sand I use a lot of different things I've got a little purple on my brush and I'm gonna take a little bit of let's see about this orange and this makes kind of a brown and that's good enough ah, there we go so you can 
see this color. So <laughs> That's that purple. purple and and actually, it was it was purple, and I just touched a little bit of orange to that. So, but I'm I'll be honest. I want it to be more. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I really want it to be um, more water. So I'm I'm dabbing my brush into the water and making that lighter, so that when I do this dry brush, and remember, this was wet and wet, this is gonna be washed, but this is the third technique in watercolor, which is called dry brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more. Now you can see some of the purple coming through. And this just suggests the sand. That's all that's gonna do. And we've got sand back here for this shore. And here, I would guess, I'm look, I need to look at my photo just real quickly. Um, that color is kind of a gray, it looks gray, uh, but I see the purple in it, so I think it's cl very close to what I see. I'm going to have a lot of shadows that appear at the bottom of where, in other words, the sea oats are going to be casting shadows. So I'm going to put some darker things in the sand. That's, that's fine if, if we do not, that. that okay, well, I'll, every now and then if I do this, you can see what my reference is. Right there we show. Good. Okay, so I've got a few shadows here. And I'm going to do the umbrella. And then I'm going to do the little pier. Oh, we don't need to have it. I think we can just do it this way, Faith. Okay. If, if I show every now and then um, the photo reference, then we'll be good. Okay, can we see the whole thing now? Going next to do a little detail with this uh, umbrella and also on that little dock. So I'm just going straight with my burnt sienna, I think. Sometimes I do pick a little blue up with my burnt sienna to make that gray. And I'm trying to keep the um, dock that you can see. Um, and there would be some steps here. So I'll just do a little impression of steps coming down. Now remember, a lot of this is going to get covered up with my um, sea oats that are coming up over. And I'm sure these rails would be in place, something like that. And with the umbrella, we're going to put something bright here. And I think uh, blue chairs and a red umbrella are in order. So I just hint at... Uh, the chairs sitting out here in the sand. And I'll put some shadows under the chairs as well. They should be facing the water, little beach chairs. And we'll use something dark, um, like with a purple, to put uh, underneath those little chairs. Uh, should, should I put a cooler in while I'm at it? <laughs> Only if you put beer in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'll put a sa sand bucket here. And uh, uh, the people are on the beach. They're walking. Matter of fact, we could put some little. I did uh, in my other little painting. I decided if I just put little dots. See those people? <laughs> and all they are are little, little, sh sh little, little straight lines. And so when they're so far away, this even looks like there are people there. So uh, you can you can improvise. I feel like that's um, more detail than I really want to put, but I am making a red umbrella. Let's just go with a straight cad red, bright. You know what? Uh, that looks too orangey. I'll put a little red and a little um, rose matter, and that will give me a nice bright red. So that's what I'm stirring together to put on my umbrella. And so we have something here now. Here's another thing I should have probably done. I always think of these things sometimes while I'm right in the middle of them. And uh, then it's too late, right? Uh, what if I had masked that off with my masking tape? Yes, then I could have painted the water right over instead of having to work around it. Uh, you know, and you have to be careful because I'm almost, it's like cutting your hair. If, I, if I'm not careful, I'm going to keep putting, I'm, the umbrella is going to be huge and I didn't mean for it to be that big. Okay, so be careful. Don't. Don't get too carried away. Always take a little and then you can always make it bigger, but you sure can't make it. I'm asking myself, where's the light coming from? It's straight down. So maybe I've got a little light on the umbrella, which makes that look better. And then um, the sea oats I'm gonna wait on, but I'm gonna put the water in next. So I can use my flat or my round for this water. 
And I think you can see some of my blues up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll start with my flat and I'm gonna add Skip's green. It's actually just a really bright green. If anybody has turquoise or, uh, let's see, see this color? This is what I want you to try to make for your water. Now look at this. This has nothing to do with turquoise. However, when I look at this beach, I see a brighter cerulean blue. I see a really beautiful color here. And I choose to select the color I like best for my beach scene, okay? Now because that umbrella is so wet, and um, here we're going around the boat. Oh, I'm gonna have to switch to um, quickly um, painting this one out because if I don't, uh, I won't be able to get it with this big brush. So I start um, with my dark color, and this is dry, by the way. You can touch it, and if it doesn't come up. But by the way, see this right here? That's a little bleeding back from the water being on my cardboard. Uh, the cardboard is always temporary. It's never permanent. Um, cardboard has acid, but for me, it stabilizes my um, piece of watercolor paper and allows me to work without my paper sliding. You could use gator board. Um, it's just that I can be very mobile and lightweight. Well, because of this wet umbrella, and by the way, water is always flat. So you see, I'm kind of wedging this paint. Now, as I move over here, I'm gonna add some water to my brush. I also dabbed it off a little. I'm gonna get a little lighter over here. And I'm simply doing that because I have to put a lot of sea oats and I want that drama to happen. I'm gonna try to work around this without touching it. And this is real iffy. Okay. Is that so far, entirely skip screen? Uh, no, ma'am. It's got a lot of cerulean. Mm -hmm. It's kind of half and half of cerulean and skip screen. So I am getting a little bleeding right there and right here. So don't do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's why I show you what not to do as well as what to do. Okay, see there, you just really don't want to touch this. In a demo, sometimes I just have to go ahead, but see how bad that's going to be right there? I'll really have to touch it up. I think I can handle it. I'm hoping I can handle it. That's what I should say. Okay, so this pier also has some water showing back behind it. It's going, oh, it's going down right to the water. Boy, that's, I don't think uh, any uh, builder would let you get away with that. So I need to probably put some sand in. All right, so this is gonna be a little dry brush too to suggest uh, motion of the water and also where the water uh, will be sparkling and where the water will be uh, kind of coming up against the shore. Uh, we had discussed that a, way, a really big wave would have a curl to it. And that's not what I'm trying to show right here sometimes you can you can use the brush in a way to suggest that there is a bit of uh, splashing going on okay so i'm ready for the sea oats if that water is drying up so the other thing you know often i'm working on more than one painting at a time to be honest when i did both of these paintings i did the skies on both of them and then i started doing the sand and then i started doing the water and then I started doing the grass. And by the time I got one to the other, uh, it had dried enough for me to do those two demos of the beach. Our objective today is to play with skies, play with water, play with sand, maybe put some boats, think about composition. I'm gonna do the sea oats, but I have a feeling they're not gonna work really well. So I'll give you a little technique here. I'm taking the red I had up here for the umbrella and I'm stirring it into that green. And what I get is a dark green. And sometimes I can use a flat bristle brush, especially if I um, take a little of the water out. And what I can do with a flat bristle, uh, with a flat brush, is to start to create a little bit of grass. Now, I don't want to do a whole lot of this. What I'm trying to do is get the base for where um, the grasses are gonna be coming up. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna to switch to where I use the smallest brush I have to do the sea oats. Now, this, this came out a little light. Um, that's not as dark as, <laughs> that's a little too dark. Um, it's not as dark as I would like for it to be. So when I put greens together, I often put burnt sienna or red. In this case, I'm just adding red to this green to get it duller, to get it more natural. That's pretty dark. Oh, let's try some purple. I don't get it even darker. Well, I'm making a mess now, so let me let me add some brown. <coughs> all right, here's the here's the theory behind all of that. There's my dark. Here's the theory. Uh, what three colors do we have that we need? Red, blue, yellow. Okay. If you think about what is red, what is what is purple? Is red and yellow. Okay. What is green? It is blue and yellow. So ultimately, we're mixing all three colors to get any kind of dark. However, if I want this to say dark green, then I've got to put a little more green in here. Okay, so there is more of the dark green I really should have. Okay, so I will start by thinking that these little grasses here are gonna be smallest. Some of these are kind of brown, but I would bring some strokes up, okay? And then these will be just a little bit taller. I'm gonna have to turn myself sideways. And, um, and turn your paper, and you want to bit, get this is not as skinny as I want it to be. Let me try this brush. Okay. I don't know. This brush is going to be bigger. Maybe not. Let's try it. Okay. Uh, I need the skinniest brush I have. Well, this one will have to do. I'm going back to this one. I think it's good enough. See, I do have a good little point to it. But the trick uh, is to not have too much paint. There we go. And to lift your hand as you do it. Well, now that looks like a number two would really do that. Bless your heart. Let me try it. May I? Thank you, Faith. Okay. These are supposed to be the smallest Louise. ones. Oh, Louise had this one. Oh, Louise, this is magic. <laughs> wow. Magic. <laughs> ah. I had no idea it was magic. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Look, look at this really wonderful line. And number two is all you need. Sometimes we get, uh, we get fussed at for using these little brushes, but sometimes you just need the little brush. Uh, I'm going to put some burnt sienna in here because I now realize that I need some browns in this. Now, this is going to be for the larger grasses. They're going to be in the foreground. Some of these are going to... Oh, Louise, this is just perfect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I tell you, everything is in the brush, for sure. I did think I was using one of my uh, smaller brushes, but this one is it. Whoa. It's, uh, you know, these are good little brushes. I use, I, I have some very small ones that are the, my Cheap Bro, Cheap Joe's brushes, but I also have some of these Simple Simmons, and they are, I used to call them Richard Simmons brushes because they, <laughs> they were so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they, they're great well, brushes. See, Kathy, you won't be able to steal it because you see I put a gold band on yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> darn, I see that. I put a gold band on all of them. Well, uh, you, I was going to say you better watch out, but now I can't get away with it, and that's too bad. Okay, so my sea oats now need to have a little detail, and they really are going to be covering up a lot of this. Now, looking at my painting, I see that I have a watermark coming in here. I also want to put some more grass. So if, with your permission, I'll use your little brush and get some more dark greens. And you'll see that this really does need the grass here. And sometimes the grasses are just kind of uh, in little clumps on the beach. And I'm just gonna add those clumps and then put a little more shadow. And then you, you can get as carried away with your grasses on the beach as you wish. And I will want to put just a hint of shadow in here. And I also want to add a little bit more with the water streaks. Okay, here's Louise's brush. 
I have not kept it. That was lovely. <laughs> Anytime. That was very nice. I didn't quite finish all my COs, but I think but you get you the. Uh, I, I think you get the idea. So I want to get everybody started. I am going to add a few more streaks here, and I want to take off the ma the masking tape so you can see how that looks. But see, even more layers, and I might even go with a bit more blue. I think um, a wash of blue over this would be really pretty. Sometimes I'll put a lot of detail in and then I come back and just blend it all together, saying, well, I did have some nice whites in there, but that looks better. And maybe at this point I can trim around the umbrella and make that look a little bit better too. Yeah, I actually like that. What happens is that we get we have to find places for contrast. Even right here would have been nice to have had a palm tree. Okay, so this is still wet down here, but I'm going to see if I can peel from this direction and show you how that uh, works. You just take the tape off, and uh, obviously I have to do a little fine-tuning and um, with the boat, and, and you're done. Okay, and I would have put, <laughs> I'm going to try it with my own little brush here. A little hint of the mast and also on this boat and I put I'm gonna let that be a, a bit of a reflection and voila we're not quite finished with the sea oats but that is our painting all right now if you wanted yes. to get rid of that bloom up there mm -hmm. I would do that. you don't it doesn't come off very easily my trick is to take a mat and uh, cut it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would probably crop it like that anyway, yeah. Yeah. because if while when I'm painting, I forget to pay attention. Like this little edge right here, I definitely will get to cover that up. And and that is going. That's still moving. So technically, because no, nope, it's uh, still dry. it's already dry. Sometimes if you catch it, you can wipe it off. Also, is I've got a little. Can you put more thing. water on it? Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. Um, I can tell you that I have repainted skies. Sometimes I will let this completely dry. If I feel like it should have gotten darker, I want to put more color in it. If it's completely dry, I'll re-wet the whole thing. It doesn't disturb it. It doesn't disturb the rest, though. Oh, not the whole that. thing. I mean the no, sky. No, the sky. And then repaint. Or oh. it's, it's giving it a glaze. And sometimes even a pink glaze can do something. Or a... Um, a different blue, a darker or a lighter, or just a graded wash. If you want this darker, you could put your dark here and then just add the water as it comes down. And that graded wash sometimes gives it more atmosphere. All right, happy painting.